27 months. So we basically created two separate instrument payloads from scratch and assembled everything and got it launched in just over two years. Okay, so before I go more into the engineering side, I want to sort of give you a little bit of the motivation behind why, why anyone would want to study biology in, in outer space. And there are two sort of branches, if you will, which sound very similar, astrobiology and space biology, but they have a, a lot of important differences. So astrobiology is very fundamental. It's about the origin, the evolution, distribution, and, and future of life in the universe. So it's very much asking, you know, where, where did we come from? Where else might life be able to exist? How, how do things happen in, in a very broad sense in the context of the, the cosmos? So it's sort of broken down into some several key areas. One is understanding the details of the distribution of prebiotic chemistry, the chemistry that, that is the starting point for life. And one of the two payloads I'll tell you about today, the, um, let's see, that's the space, space evolution of, uh, I've forgotten what this acronym is for. This is looking at, at organics and how they, how they change over time in, in space. So that's one of the experiments I'll talk about. Um, and the second one is, to, is studying how life can adapt and survive in extraterrestrial environments. Um, and the second payload, we'll, we'll look at that one. So you'll hear about these two rather different experiments. One is really more astrochemistry, and the one really does deal with how biology survives in the long term. Um, also, looking for, for signs of existing or, or extinct life is something that's part of astrobiology. And our SIBO payload does that to a limited degree. Um, it doesn't actually search for organisms. What it, what it does is try to inform us about how long organic molecules that 